Killer Joe uh, was written by Tracy Letts, who is a writer that I have the greatest respect for. I've had the opportunity to work with some of the very best playwrights and screenwriters around, like Harold Pinter, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature. I did a work of his. I think Tracy Letts is in that category. He's won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama, um, but he and I are really on the same page. He and I view the world in the same way. And uh, when I saw his screenplay of Killer Joe, I thought that um, it, it really would make an excellent film. Letts' screenplay is a view of the American family that is kind of uh, twisted. Uh, but I think it's more accurate than a kind of Norman Rockwell view of the American family that has been perpetrated for decades. I think there was a time, maybe, when the American family was more like the Norman Rockwell version than the Tracy Letts version, but, but not today. And um, so, so I think there's truth in his work, there's poetry in his work. I've done a previous screenplay of his called Bug, and I directed a play of his um, at the South Coast Repertory Theater called The Man from Nebraska. And basically, I find myself, as I've said, on the same page with him in terms of a world view. Now, that may be sick, but it happens to be true. This is an original story with original characters. What, what this is to me, in a nutshell, though, is a kind of twisted Cinderella story or Snow White story in that the young woman in the film who is living in, in rather dire circumstances fantasizes about living in a palace and finding the prince. And eventually in this story she does find the prince, but he happens to be a flawed prince. And that's often as many women out there will attest to, what happens to, to so many little girls who are looking for a prince. There are a number of actors that could have played this part, but there might have been a very strong uh, resistance to that from an audience if the actor wasn't someone who had um, already establish their relationship with a lot of the audience as a good guy and a decent guy, which Matthew is. He's also an accomplished actor. He gave himself a hundred percent to this role. He came in knowing it. Though he, he never had to do another take because of, you know, blowing a line or not understanding a moment in the film. And I knew he was a dedicated actor and had tremendous reserves of talent and ability that he had not fully exploited in the films that made him popular. I also knew that he was from the part of the country where the film takes place, which is Dallas in Texas. So he understood the character very well. He didn't have to fake it or put on an accent or put on a disguise. Matthew grew up where this story t really takes place. So I say it's a combination of his tremendous ability, which I thought to a great extent w had been untapped, and his understanding of, uh, of this character innately. And I think he's great in the film. It's one of the best experiences I've ever had with the whole cast. Chris is a, is a very, he's played by Emil Hirsch who happens to be one of the best young actors of this or any generation. He reminds me a lot of Montgomery Clift, even James Dean. And he's likable. He's a wonderful, likable, accomplished actor. The character he's playing, for the most part, is on the dark side. Uh, he's a guy trying to get ahead. He is without a moral compass. He doesn't really know right from wrong and he acts impulsively and gets himself in a lot of trouble 